Hola, hey, howdy, hi, hello, everyone. Uh, this is the first of several discussions about stress in our lives. Spoiler alert, you can't opt out. Well, <clears throat> this is basically about stress and human experience, uh, the good and the bad. Starting with the good, uh, we want to actually think of good as something called adaptive behaviors. What you see here is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. At the bottom, we have our basic needs, food, water, and shelter, uh, or as I think of it, pacos. Um, <laughs> Self-protection, meaning that we have a sense of safety in our physical selves and in our communities. Love and belonging, getting to be who we are, believing in ourselves, and then at the very top, self-actualization. Having a family, having friends, connecting with the creative aspects of our humanity. These are the things we call adaptive behaviors. They build hope and stability. On the other hand, we also have things that take away hope, add stress, and create instability in our lives. And for people your age, um, you inherit these moments in your lives that are very traumatic. We call these adverse childhood experiences. In fact, some kids have so many, they have complex persistent toxic stress disorder. Um, if it, once that goes unaddressed, and if that continues on for too long, we start to have problems with thinking, feeling, and friend-making. If that becomes uh, problematic, if that adds problems, you end up having unhealthy behaviors. You increase your health risks. If you don't fix that, <laughs> disease, disability, and major social problems, and in many communities, uh, particularly here in the United States, um, people who are minoritized, people who are told in very, very obvious and very subtle ways that they are not worth human dignity and love, those people actually do end up dying years early. And so these kind of behaviors are called maladaptive. They increase stress, take away hope, and just add to the body uh, weathering away like um, you know a car that's been out in the in elements too long, a car that's been outside too much, eventually wears down. Well, so do humans. Now, you know, I always talk about what my job is, and uh, I really do think my job is to listen to the chaos that comes out of being a young person and helping you guys make sense of it, and helping uh, make sense of you guys to the adults who are not listening. So all of the chaos, all of the craziness, all of the stress in your lives is typically kept outside of school. Well, in this course, it will be central to what we are studying. If we are not social studying, if we are not studying society and our place within it, then what are we doing? So, this is about, essentially, stress and the American dream. How individuals face stress uh, will always result in how a society treats its people. And that's one of the reasons, I think, that the quote, These violent delights have violent ends, by William Shakespeare, an English writer, uh, really captures the American experience, and not always in a good way. Well, <clears throat> stress is something that is a part of life. It is something we kind of have to deal with. A, clearly, uh, even fictional characters feel stress. Now, what exactly is stress? Well, let me start with the fancy-pantsy words. The medical definition is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Acute stress is caused by individual stressors. Chronic stress is caused by ongoing stressors. The real-world translation, however, is that stress occurs when your body needs something or needs to get away from something. 
basically, when something in your body is out of balance, you experience what you call stress. Now, in the medical field, <clears throat> stress is the body's attempt to retain original homeostasis, which means balance. Or, in the absence of that possibility, it is an attempt for the body to reach a new homeostasis, a new sense of balance. Either way, your body is always seeking a sense of balance. Without a stress response, you would die because you would never be able to find that balance. You would never be motivated to become more even, more balanced, with a better sense of homeostasis. <clears throat> so, in the real world, that means that stress isn't good, nor is it really bad. Uh, <clears throat> again, without the sensation of stress, you wouldn't get the signal to eat, care for others or yourselves, or even put your clothes on in the morning. Stress events, or stressors, push you into action. You need stress. Now, again, spoiler alert, the only people who live stress-free lives are the dead. However, that doesn't mean that the stress caused by people who give up their lives uh, stops. In fact, while the dead may live, leave excuse me, their stress behind, their stress multiplies within those who remember them. Um, so I have uh, watched 14 of my young people I've taught pass away, some of them from suicide. And while the pain was over for them, it actually got much, much worse for the people who loved them. And so that's one of the reasons that, um, you know, in my own struggles with mental health, that, you know, when I've had those thoughts of just like, oh, man, I'm done with this. I just want to end this. I think about that's just going to cause more pain and suffering in others. So instead, I choose to work to help others have less pain so they don't feel like I did. Again, basically stress is your body's natural response to its environment. And this is not a flaw. It's a feature. There is no opting out. And again, people who opt out multiply the stress in the lives of the people who love them. Now, you're probably most familiar with stress as fight or flight. Something is stressful to you, incredibly stressful, you either want to fight it or you run from it. You can also have freeze. Your body can actually shut down uh, so hard that you fall asleep and you can't be woken up without uh, time or special drugs being injected into your system. Just like somebody with a drug overdose. Yes, your own brain can give you a drug overdose. There was a young lady... Uh, I taught, who passed out in the bathroom. But they checked her for drugs and then they didn't find anything. And I told them to give her a particular drug that helps uh, people with uh, opium overdoses recover. Well, they said, well, sure, blood doesn't show up for any of this. I said, give it to her. It's cheap. Nobody's going to get hurt. It's not dangerous. And they gave it to her and she woke up. Turns out a young gentleman had touched her in a way that reminded her of something horrible that had happened to her when she was younger, and it caused a flashback, and her body shut down. Just like somebody with a heroin or an opium overdose. So that's what freeze is. So fight, flight, freeze. And <laughs> a fancy word, fornicate, um, which... Our adult situations, our romantic situations. And I know that it's not normal to talk about this in school, um, but as of March 2020, we reached 7.8 billion human beings on planet Earth. Um, and they, they didn't get put together at Build-A-Bear. Nobody pulled them out of the Valero uh, hot dog machine. Um, nobody was at Allsup's and thought, you know what? I can get uh, a chimichurri and a child. No. <laughs> With 7.8 billion of us on this planet, uh, fornication is part of the human experience. It's obviously not that much of a secret if there are 7.8 billion human souls on this planet. So fight, flight, freeze, and fornicate are basically our stress responses. 
Now, remember, as a review, there is adaptive change and maladaptive change. Adaptive change is good for survival. Maladaptive change is bad for survival. Now, what you see here, I'm not going to go into in too, too much detail here, but it is something that me and my students created last year. They created it. I helped organize it. Remember, from the chaos, my job is to find order. On the left, you see positive stressors, things like culture, self-esteem, art, food, entertainment, charity, sports. And then you see the stuff that's maladaptive on the right. Addiction, escapism, drugs, prison systems, greed, environmental destruction, death, human trafficking, all of these things. This is the mental and social landscape of our youth at Jimmy Carter, according to the kids last year. We will build something like this too. But this is kind of like moving through a physical landscape. Like if you're in the mountains, you've got to go up and down the little tiny rock hills and the little tiny valleys on your way up to the top of the peak. Well, all of these things are the peaks and valleys of our social lives, of the lives we live with others. Uh, my South Valley Academy kids also have created things like this. This is the version of it that they came up with. We will come up with our own as the year progresses. This ends part one of our stress lectures.